Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving into the exciting world of Linux with the beta release of Ubuntu 25.10, codenamed Questing Coca. If you are a fan of open source operating systems or just curious about what's new in the Ubuntu ecosystem, stick around because I got all the details you need. I have personally tested every flavor of this beta from the standard desktop to server cloud and all the spins like Kubuntu, Subuntu and more. So I'll share my hands-on insights to help you decide if it's worth trying out. Remember, this is a beta. So it's not for production use. But it's a great sneak peek at the final version dropping on October 9th, 2025. Let's break it down step by step. First off, What's Ubuntu 25.10 all about? The short-term release builds on Ubuntu's reputation for bleeding cutting-edge tech with user-friendly design. It's powered by the Linux kernel 6.17, which brings better support for modern hardware across Intel, AMD, ARM, and even RISC-V architectures. That means smoother performance on everything from laptops to servers, with enhancements in storage systems like PTRFS, F2FS, and EXT4. If you are into gaming or heavy workloads, you will appreciate the new NVIDIA Dynamic Boost feature, which optimizes power and performance for better efficiency. At the heart of the desktop edition is GNOME 49, the latest desktop environment that's packed with the refinements. Expect things like media controls right on your lock screen, individual brightness sliders for multiple monitors in the quick settings, and overall smoother app interactions with new animations and improved HDR support. Ubuntu has also gone all in on Wayland as the default display server. No more XOR session out of the box. Though you can install it if needed for compatibility. This shift promises better security and graphics performance, with X11 apps still running via XVLand. One of the standoff changes is the switch to some fresh default apps. The old eye of GNOME Image Viewer has been replaced by Loop, a modern Rust and GTK4 based tool that's faster and more efficient. Similarly, GNOME Terminal steps aside for PTX, a sleek new terminal emulator that's designed for better usability. The rest of the app lineup stays familiar, but the Arrow theme gets subtle tweaks like rounder UI elements, updated icons, and a fresh purple wallpaper featuring our Coca mascot. Under the hood, there are some big shifts aimed at reliability and modernity. Sudo now defaults to a Rust-based implementation called sudo-rs for enhanced security. Dracut takes over as the InterMemis generator, replacing the older tools for faster boot times. Crony becomes the go-to NTP client for accurate time syncing. And there is improved management for TPM-backed full-disk encryption, including better recovery key handling and passphrases trends indicators. Porutelis have been rebuilt in Rust 2, which could mean fewer vulnerabilities down the line. On the enterprise side, you'll find tighter integration with Microsoft Entra ID and automated install options via landscape. Privacy conscious users will like Ubuntu Insights, a new opt in system that replaces Ubuntu Report. It collects non-personal metrics to help Canonical improve the OS. But you have the full control over what gets shared and any old consents don't carry over. So it's a fresh start. The toolchain has seen major updates as well. GCC 15.2 for compiling, glibc 2.42, Python 3.13.7, Rust 1.85 LLVM 20 
Go 1.24 Open JDK 25 Open SSL 3.5 and Mesa 25.2 for graphics System D is at 257.9 Ensuring solid system management This upgrades makes 25.10 a solid choice for developers and power users Now let's talk flavors since I put them all through their paces in virtual machines and on hardware, the standard Ubuntu desktop feels polished and responsive. Perfect for everyday use. Ubuntu server is lean and mean with a subquity installer, making setups a breeze. Great for cloud or home lab environments. Ubuntu cloud images are optimized for quick deployments on platforms like AWS or Azure. For alternative desktops, Ubuntu shines with KDE Plasma 6.4, offering tons of customizations. In my test, it handled multitasking flawlessly and the beta feels stable for Plasma fans. Now, Ubuntu uses XFCE 4.20.1, keeping things lightweight and speedy. Ideal for older hardware. I noticed snappier window management and no major hiccups. On the Lubuntu side, Lubuntu brings LXQT 2.2.0, super efficient for low resource machines. It booted quickly in my trials with a clean, no frill interface. About the Ubuntu Mat, delivers a classic experience with Mat desktop, reliable and nostalgic, performing well across the board. About the Ubuntu Baji, integrates the Baji environment seamlessly. It's elegant and modern, with smooth animations in testing. Ubuntu Cinnamon mimics a Windows-like feel with Cinnamon Desktop, intuitive for newcomers, and it ran without issues. About the Ubuntu Unity, it revives the old Unity 7 interface. If you miss the classics, this one's a treat and it felt responsive. About the Ed Ubuntu focuses on education with tools for classrooms. Preloaded apps work great in my demo setups. Ubuntu Studio is tailored for creators, bundling audio, video, and graphics software on KDE Plasma. I tested some multimedia workflows, and it handled editing tasks smoothly. And about the final thing, which is Ubuntu Kylin. It is optimized for Chinese users with local specific tweaks. Solid if that's your need. All these flavors share the core updates, but tweak the desktop and apps to fit their vibe. Downloads are available from the official Ubuntu releases site or flavor specific pages. Grab the ISOs and test in a virtual machine like I did. If you are eager to try it, head to releases.ubuntu.com forward slash 25.10 for the main images or check cdimage.ubuntu.com for flavors. Upgrading from 25.04, use the upgrade guide on help.ubuntu.com. Just remember, betas can have bugs, so back up your data and report issues on Launchpad to help the team. Overall, Ubuntu 25.10 Beta is shaping up to be a forward-thinking release with meaningful improvements in performance, security, and usability. I'm impressed with how far it's come, especially after testing all the variants. If you give it a spin, drop your thoughts in the comments. What flavor are you most excited about? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more Linux updates. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.